there, brother. Welcome to the podcast, Stop Crying Poser, greatest podcast known to man as voted by Matthew Griffith, Valor, Galvin, Johan Everett, Brody Valdez, and Tanner Washington. I typed in a random name generator, but those people exist, and they all agree this is the greatest podcast known to man. We do this podcast every single Friday, right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, but today was a little bit different. It's uh, currently 4.18 that's going to be our new uh, our new intro, me saying that the podcast is at 3.30 and then saying the current time, and it's always completely late. Maybe you should just change the time of the podcast. Well, why would I do that when well, now we have this fun new bit? Shout out to Minute Maid, Paul Miranda, Scrambles NBD, Infamy, Paul Miranda again, iBook Boy, Infamy, okay, it's just the same name, Scrambles. It's like five or six people in here chatting, but I'm sure there's a couple of you guys lurking and jerking in the background. So do what you got to do. Maybe it's uh, because it's almost 420. It's almost that time to smoke the W. I've been meaning to go back to the dispensary. They just built a new one right next to my house. Uh, I told you guys probably several podcasts ago. I started doing the, the vapes, the weed vapes to help you go to sleep so I could get off melatonin. But uh, I haven't been... You know, I just haven't made time to go in there. Plus, it's kind of expensive. You go in there, you, you expect to spend, you know, you're like, oh, I got 40 bucks. They're like, uh, that's going to be $105. And you're like, whoa, dude. And it's because of taxes and shit. But you know what? They, what I always said when weed was illegal, I'm like, you know what? They should just tax the fuck out of it. And now that was, I said that assuming I would never smoke weed. And now they're taxing the fuck out of it. And now I'm just mad at Uncle Sam. God damn it. If you guys will notice... I have a, a diamond tattooed on my head. <laughs> I'm lying. It's it's a fake tattoo. Um, I figure it would be a good lead-in to our first story. On uh, the day before the 4th of July is my friend Justin's birthday. We went over to have like a little swimming party. It ended up being a bunch of kids. And you know what? I thought to myself, I said, you know what? I'm going to bring over my little stack of fake tattoos. Because I've been doing the fake tattoo thing for the Twitch streams. You know, we get... Drunk, late at night, put on face tattoos, beg for money. You know, typical typical Twitch kind of thing. You know, I put on a bikini, shake my booty for a couple dollars. You know, a, a couple, couple of dollars. <laughs> you can wedge it in between my butt cheeks and I can suck it into my asshole. <laughs> you guys never seen that at the strip club? The old shop vac coming up next to the stage. Shop vac. Uh... <laughs> So I go over there, I bring the little tattoos, All right away, no one knows I brought fake tattoos, I should have put that in my text message, I show up, I have three tattoos across my forehead, and my friends are like, dude, did you really get your fucking head tattooed? I'm like, no, I brought fake tattoos for everybody, and then I went to like, it was like, uh, like, like there was an older group of people, you know, like, like the, the, the moms and dads of, of the people that are already adults. But let's just say grandparents. There's grandparents at the party. And I could just feel the, the weird judgment. You know, I have tattoos all, all over, all over my big fat belly. But I could feel this tension in the air. And I thought to myself, you know what, this is what it would be like to have a face tattoo. And then I pulled out the tattoos. And I was like, I brought tattoos for all the kids. And then, then I felt the tension go away because they were like, ah, he's faking it. It's, well, that's a weird thing, right? You know what I've always said? My, uh, my motto is I would never get a face tattoo unless I had a million dollars in the bank or like a million dollars in general. If I had a million dollars, it's face tattoo time. So if this is something you guys want to see Twitch, call your favorite Saudi Arabian prince and let's get those donations going. Because this this could be a reality. I could get an ice cream bar, get the diamond, maybe a uh, in honor of Roe versus Wade. I have a I have a, a coat hanger as as a as a tattoo. <laughs> I'm saving that one for like a a, a good a better day. Uh, that that'd be great. So that's what's been going on. I also noticed. Uh, well, actually, before I change the topic, that was on July third, right? I go to the the fun party on july 4th i go to ride dog's mom's house to shoot off fireworks and i think to myself eh, i could bring these face i got a i got a million of them i could bring more face ta face tattoos you know but then i was like dude it's ride dog's mom's house there's not gonna be no fucking kids it's gonna be a bunch of adults 
I get there. It's it's three kids in the pool that no one even knows how they got there. No one knows that their parents. I'm looking at uh, Ride Dog's mom like, who are them fucking kids? And he's like, I don't know. They just showed up. I'm like, nope. I'm like, who? Hello, who's who's mom is here? No one knows. Just kids, just in a pool. Fifty kids there, and they already brought face tattoos. Some of them, I I didn't know that. I didn't know fake tattoos were coming back. Fake face tattoos. I didn't know that was a new thing that's coming back, because I would have brought more. I would have gave them to all the kids. Some of the kids didn't weren't able to have them. <laughs> the less fortunate fake face tattoos. The kids that might actually go to college one day. Um. So yeah, that was that was my Fourth of July. It was it was a great time. Shot off a bunch of crazy illegal fireworks, and um, not that they were crazy, they were pretty tame. But I I was reading today uh, how many citations, how many citations were were like given out by police because there's all these fucking commercials saying we're gonna be cracking down this year on the illegal fireworks. You know, fireworks here you are still allowed to have fireworks, but they're not allowed to leave the ground. You know what I'm saying? They can spin. They can shoot out a little turd out of them, like a little little shit fucking fireworks. They can spin. They can make a noise, but they're not supposed to shoot up in the sky and explode. That's like the rule. Uh, the cool thing about where I am is if you drive like 30 minutes and you get onto like the Indian reservation, they don't have no rules, so they they sell these fireworks. Oh, they make millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> these fireworks stands in the uh, on the reservations or, or whatever they are and maybe in another county so they go on these commercials saying we're really cracking down don't do it <laughs> we're gonna get you the boogeyman's gonna come you know if you shoot off an illegal firework i'm gonna come to your house and fuck your mom they had all they they, they gave us all the warnings in the world and out of out of what i assume to be at least twenty thousand people shooting off uh the the the, the fireworks that go up in the air and go Pew! I'm guessing 20,000. The number could be much higher. It could be in the 50,000 range. I think we have like 2 million people in this city, maybe 3 million for holidays. Like it's it's a populated city. It's very small, but it's populated. Um, you know, we're not LA, but it's a, but Las Vegas is a pretty big city. Okay, out of 20,000 <laughs> illegal firework doers, they, they gave out 53 tickets. And as I was saying earlier, I feel like the reason for that it's probably the same reason that they do like open containers, right? The cop has this, this, uh, what is it called when they get to decide what they, what they can do? It starts with a D. It's their, D, uh, their decision, but it's something, okay, whatever. They get to decipher what, what the fuck? Their judgment. They use their judgment. My God, I can't, I hate this happens every podcast. They use their judgment on if they're going to give you a ticket or not, right? So, uh, so if you have an open container, they can either just say, hey, dump that out. You're not supposed to be drinking here. And you go, yes, sir. And you dump it out. Or they can say, hey, dump that out. You go, no, you filthy pig. Eat my nuts, you fucking dumb bitch. And then they go, okay, cool. Okay, I'll eat your nuts right after you pay the city $600. Here you go. It's like that's – you have to be a dick to earn these uh, these tickets. So I imagine that's what happened on 4th of July. They're like, hey, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen – uh, a lot of noise complaints, a lot of commercials. Uh, I'm not going to come fuck your wife yet, but how about the rest of these f fireworks? How about you just curb it for today? No more fireworks that are going to explode in the air. And then some fat redneck comes out and goes, well, my fucking dad died for you, God damn it. And there's only three things I care about. Family, God, and fireworks, you dumb bitch. And then the cop goes, okay, cool. Here's here's your ticket. <laughs> you now owe the city uh whatever. Five hundred dollars. You now owe the city seven seven thousand PBRs. The, the the amount that could have bought you seven thousand PBRs and possibly a a a, a tooth fix. <sighs> so that was the fourth of July. It was a good time. I watched the uh what the fuck? I watched the VOD for the last podcast and I had a red nose. I don't know. I was Rudolph. I had a red nose. I didn't notice it till after the podcast. My nose remained red until like yesterday and it started peeling. I got like a, maybe like an extreme sunburn on only one millimeter of my nose. And that was, uh, it was annoying, man. You can't take any cool pictures on 4th of July. You look like a fucking idiot. And I don't even know what caused it. <laughs> 
I didn't even know I had it until I saw myself on video. Unfortunately, I don't spend that much time looking at myself in the mirror, except when I'm jacking off. What was that movie? American, uh, not American me. American gangster. American. Ah, well, you guys, you guys get it. <laughs> no, nah, whatever, man. Have you guys seen the meme of Joe Biden saying like this nation can be summed up in one word? <laughs> I'm like, bro, you got that right, my bro. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that, you gotta check it out. Um, so for the past, uh, you know, fuck it, not the past ten days. Let me, uh, let me make sure that we can give you guys a free Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack because right now it's trivia time. It's trivia time and story time. Okay. If you want to be the winner of a Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack and you're watching live and you live in America, then all you have to do is answer this question correctly. Who dropped the screw in the tuna? No. Who is on the $2 bill? Who is this guy? Whose face is on the $2 bill? Who dropped the screw in the tuna? <laughs> so... How I got this $2 bill is still, it's still bizarre to me. It makes no fucking sense. Minute Maid says, Thomas Jefferson, you are correct. Thomas Jefferson's been on the $2 bill since 1869. That's right. When I was 18, 69 time. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's right. Minute Maid, send me your information after the podcast and I will get these stickers to you promptly. Or not promptly. I, I, sometimes it takes a week and I also lose everyone's dress all the time. Also, if there's anyone out there who I owe stickers to, let me know. Sharky Genie was just here. She was just here. I, she she always says I owe her stickers, but she didn't bring it up. So you know what? Um, <laughs> the two dollar bill, bro. It's a short story. I'm I'm pulling junk mail out of my mailbox, and I'm just looking at it like, okay, junk mail, junk mail, junk mail. One of them says like, complete this survey, and I'm like, oh, junk mail, junk mail. So what I always do, just in case they have like my name on the mail, I don't know why I was told to do this as a kid, but it's just what I do. I, I rip all my mail in half across my name so that I don't, in my mind, it, I'm, I'm making the world a safer place. I don't know why that, I don't know what, identity theft or something, I don't know. I rip it in half, and, th and then this, this shit happens. And I go, what the hell, dude? And I look at it, and I go, this looks fake. And I feel it, I'm like, bro, this is a really good fake. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, bro, it's got like, if you can see through it, it's got an ID number, it says, it says it's got a stamp, it has a year, and then it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. I took it to the bar, I was like, Ward, you're pretty good at spotting fake bills, can you, what do you, what do you have, like a marker or something? Here, fucking see if this is real, he goes, yeah, it looks real to me, man. I'm like, dude, they're just sending out $2 bills in surveys across the world. I didn't even, I didn't have to complete the survey. I should have read what it was because what if what if it was like the Ch Charlie Chocolate Factory thing where it's like if you're the if you find the $2 bill, then you get $1 million and then I could then I just I just wasted my face tattoo dream. Okay, well, I got the $2, man. Uh, next topic. You guys want me to tell you why I might be racist? <laughs> nice segue. Um, <laughs> nice segue. Um, so I ordered a bunch of shit from wish.com and, uh, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. It's more like fake tattoos. I got a little like lock pick kit. That's t absolutely terrible. And then I got a, a Bluetooth, like a Bluetooth connector that looks like it's going to be really good for how cheap it was. I also got some women's clothing for those of you that watch my other stream, <laughs> my other late night stream. I bought some women's clothing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Subscribe to, to twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. You'll, you'll see what the fuck's going on. So I'm getting, I'm opening all these wish.com packages and then I sneezed and I went, oh fuck, dude. What if, what if they packed the boxes with monkey pox? And I, that was a serious thought I had. Like that's so far fetched. That's so far-fetched. <laughs> but for some reason, that's where my mind went. I was like, dude, what if they shoved a bunch of monkeypox in there next to my Bluetooth and my lockpick kit, and now I'm fucking, now I'm infected. 
I don't know, man. I, maybe I need help. <laughs> I, I need help. And first off, it, if I do get fucking monkeypox, I'm leaving a bad review on each and every one of you motherfuckers. I, be, I don't know if it was the women's clothing or the lockpick or the Bluetooth. Who has the most to gain? Hmm. I don't know. Well, I also got some wigs coming soon <laughs> from Wish.com. I ordered some more fake tattoos. I have a fake, com I have a fake complete arm sleeve. I don't know how I'm gonna put it on. It's, it's gonna be. It's gonna. I'm gonna need some friends to help me. Probably like stick it on. Man, fake tattoos are fun, dude. <laughs> it's my new like weird little guilty pleasure. Maybe I'm slowly going crazy. You know what? These things that like. Like, if I'm watching a guy on Twitch and he's got, like, fake face tattoos, I'm gonna go, man, what a fucking loser. But if I'm doing it, I'm just like, oh, I'm cool. Like, I'm funny. I'm, I'm quirky and I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, like, I, I'm making it funny. Like, okay, no, you're not, dude. You're just a fucking weirdo, man. Take the fucking bra off, asshole. <sighs> so, moving on. Sharky Genie just left. Um, just left today. She's, we've known each other for a long time. She lives in Texas. She's a Twitch Twitch viewer as well. She might be out there lurking. She was here for 10 days. I'm going to tell you guys, 10 days is a long time. And I, I'm relieved that she's gone. I used to feel the same way when Major Crew would come over. Like They're like, yeah, dude, we're on our way from uh, California to Texas. We're going to hang out for a couple days. And then they stay for like eight days. And you're like, fuck, dude, I, I just need time. I need time where there's not a person near me. It's not just me time. It's little things. Like if I can... If I can hear someone in the next room, like having a conversation, I'm like, oh, like it's it's no longer me time, you know what I mean? Or if if I'm sleeping and I say to myself like, I hear like the door open and they're like, oh, I let your dog out, and I'm like, okay, but fuck, <laughs> it's, I, I, that that erases my some, There's something about just being um, just just being alone. I I like it, you know what I mean? Especially I do this every like Monday and Tuesday, and it's usually because on on. Friday and Saturday, I go out with my friends. I drink a lot. I come home. I'm hungover. Saturday is UFC night. You know, I drink a lot, eat, eat shitty food, eat pizza. And then Sunday, I'm like, you know, feeling like shit. Monday is my me day. I don't want to talk to no one. My phone is off. I don't want to be around no one. I'm not, I don't even leave the house. I'm not going grocery shopping. I'm not doing shit. I might cook a nice meal, something like that. But I don't want to have a text conversation. I don't want to be worried about social media. I don't do shit. And sometimes I interchange that with Sundays. And that's like my recharge. And when when people are staying over too long, it's like, oh, I didn't get my recharge. And it's it's not. I mean, it's cool, you know, because I get I get to fuck something, <laughs> you know what I mean. But it, but it's also like, uh, the alone time is, for me, is nice, you know. I, maybe not everybody's like that. It, and it also seems like contradictory, because I I surround myself with people all the time, you know. I like I I never go to the bar alone. I, I mean, I do if I know the bartender, but then I'm not alone. Or, or if I hit up three people, I'm like, hey, you want to go somewhere? You want to do this? You want to go eat? I like, I won't go do it alone. I won't go eat at a restaurant alone, which I, which I know that's like a, that's like a whole nother topic or conversation. I won't, um, I won't go to the bar alone. You know, it, it's something about it. Like, I'll be the first one in the bar. I'll go in the bar if I, if even if I know you'll be there in an hour. I'm like, okay, I'll hang out for an hour. Like, I don't care. I'll, I'll play the jukebox. I'll fucking. I'll gamble 20 bucks. I'm, I might get an appetizer. And before I know the hour is gone, I'll watch some sports. But for for someone like me that always wants to be around people, uh, the, the alone time is is nice, man. It, it, it certainly re reminds me of uh, of like the major crew days and the days that people would be staying over, you know, the, the skate house kind of thing. It's... <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I feel like I was looking at the chat room like somebody would agree, but nobody fucking did. So maybe maybe again, maybe I'm losing. iBookBoy says people need alone time, apparently. The fact that you said apparently means maybe you don't. <laughs> oh my God, man. It's not even like, it's not even like no one's annoying you. No, no one's being annoying. It's just like, just the thought that someone's nearby. I feel like I would lose my mind if I had to have like roommates. And it wouldn't even be their fault. But eventually, I would just like build, build all this like emotion. And emotion would build and build. And eventually, I'd just be like, "Fuck! Do the fucking dishes, you piece of shit!" Throw something against the wall. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I finished Stranger Things. <laughs> Another segue. Uh, I don't know who's watched it. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I started watching Stranger Things only like 
three weeks ago. I, I got through it uh, yesterday. Kind of corny, but the whole show is supposed to be corny, so I'm excited for the next season. Let's look at an article real quick. I got an article here that's kind of like mainstream news. I'll quickly skim over it. A guy uh, kind of tried to rob a store and got stabbed. Let's let's read. A clerk for a New York City bodega was charged with killing a man who attacked him behind the counter. So you're, you're already you're reading that right. A man attacked him and he killed him. But those who support him say that new surveillance video showing the shocking incident could help the worker be cleared of the charges. First off, how is it new surveillance video? It's the, the, the minute someone gets stabbed to death in, in a, like a, a 7-Eleven or a gas station or a bodega, my first thought as a cop would be like, what is that, uh, what's that square thing with the lens on the front of it? Um, any, any chance that that is a, uh, some type of, uh, film device? Any, any chance that Steven, we could get Steven Spielberg in here? Steven Spielberg in here, mate. I don't know how to do a New York accent. Hey, is that a camera, son? Hey, son. That thing filming, son? Water. <laughs> hey, for real, son. <laughs> I don't I don't know how to do a New York accent. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um <laughs> New York. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Is that camera work working or what? Get the hot dogs. <laughs> um anyways. I feel like when they say new surveillance video, it's like, dude, how's it new? That should have been the first thing you looked at. And they probably, maybe they did. Maybe this person who wrote this article is just stupid. Jose Alba. And uh, didn't that guy fight Conor McGregor? <laughs> I'm kidding. Jose Alba remained quiet Thursday as he returned home after being released on bail following almost a week at Rikers Island. His bail was lowered from a quarter million dollars down to 50000 as part of his release, he was forced to surrender his passport and remain in the five boroughs and submit to electronic monitoring. The 61-year-old, 61 years old, he's facing murder charges after police say he fatally stabbed a man inside a convenience store. There's growing outrage about his arrest. However, many are wondering was it murder or self-defense i think very few people are wondering that but you know everyone everyone thinks about different things can they um can we read about this surveillance video shows 35 year old austin simone austin simon why do i always say simone i can't even get like a, a bag of cheetos without going is it the limon is the cheetos limon 35 year old austin simon <laughs> I'm going to keep saying Simone. 35-year-old St Austin S Simone storms behind the counter and shoves Alba into a wall. So he's behind the counter, not supposed to be there, shoves someone into a wall, assault, right? Moments later, a fight breaks out. Alba grabs a knife, stabbing Simon at least three times, right in the neck. There's a video of this. We're not going to show it here, but you guys can, you guys can use your skills and go find the video. Investigators say the brawl started after Simone's girlfriend tried paying for a bag of chips, but her card was declined. So she went outside, told her boyfriend to come in, rough this guy up. <laughs> like, the whole thing just sounds so annoying. Like, oh, I can't afford a bag of chips. Either my card's broken or your card reader's broken. Okay, well, sucks that I have to go home without the chips. All right, I guess I'll just mind my business. Or go, I can't get these chips. Hey, uh, boyfriend who's waiting outside. Hey, can you go in here and uh, rough up this 61-year-old? Yeah, you know, I think, I think, I think less, less people would be roughing up the old man if, if more people got shot for, for assault. I've said, I've said this since the beginning. I don't think this guy de deserves to die, okay? I don't mean to sentence him to death. But I mean, I think that these petty crimes would stop happening... Like, you, like, you're not going to beat up old men anymore if every old man has the ability to kill you. The whole reason he was beating up the old man is because he had this distinct size advantage and he, and he just wanted to be a dick and commit a violent crime. And guess what? A violent crime happened right back. And then you died. I don't know. Uh, maybe we... I'm sure that some people in the chat room and people viewing on YouTube, maybe we can agree to disagree, you know, and I guess I could see both sides. Shoving someone is not the same as stabbing them. But 
I would I would advise you to watch the video. This guy's clearly scared. Okay, he's scared. He's outsized, outmatched, and he's just trying to do his fucking shitty job. He just wants to do his shitty job with his shitty card reader and his shitty customers. Really, no reason to shove this guy behind the counter. Like I don't know. Uh, whatever, whatever. Next article, kind of similar, I guess. Fremont Street Experience. So this is a big area downtown Las Vegas. I know it's kind of local news, but we do this all the time. Uh, look at all these people. A bunch of people hang out. They drink. They they watch people dance. By the way, I saw. So this is a the mecca of like of like performers, right? Think Venice Beach, but more meth somehow. There's people juggling, there's people breakdancing, there's people rapping, and then there's people that just do nothing. Then there's a fat dude that says, uh, show me your tits or give me five bucks, and they just sit there and stinking up the fucking ground. But there's little areas where they're allowed to perform, and I don't know if they need to rent those out or what, but there's little areas. Um, I saw a, a clever one the other day. It said, uh, it said, pay me a dollar if your wife is hot. So it's kind of like, okay, like I'm just a fat, talentless fucking bum, but I came up with a good slogan. Or the ones that say, like we've seen this one a million times, uh, parents were killed, need a dollar for ninja lessons, or so something stupid like that. But this week I saw the most talented guy I've seen down there. This motherfucker was on top of a, a structure that he built out of like glass, like glass, like shot glasses and little like drinking glasses. He built this little structure it's like, I don't know, fucking five, six, seven feet tall. It's like wiggly and jiggly. It can barely fucking stand up. He builds it in front of you, climbs up to the top of it, stands on one arm. I go, wow, that's pretty gnarly. This is like Cirque du Soleil. He's dressed like a fucking hobo. He's dressed like he's got the bag on the stick and he's walking down the train tracks. <laughs> he's got tattoos and shit. He doesn't look like he did traditional Cirque du Soleil training. Now, let me just say that. He climbs to the top of it. Stands on one hand, waves at everybody, and you're like, okay, that's cool. Then he pulls out, like, a fucking, like, a, a glass of Hennessy, like a bottle, sets it down, puts it on the top of his head, and then balances on the Hennessy on top of this fool's feet above everyone. Balances on just his head on the bottle of Hennessy, just one tiny point going into his fucking dome. And then he takes his hands, he puts his hands to his side, and he just stands there for a second, like, kind of wiggling you can hear like the glass like going ching, 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 like like you can you can just see a disaster about to happen and if it does happen a, every piece of glass is breaking and this guy's gonna fall into shards of glass <laughs> and then this motherfucker on, on standing on one hand pours himself a drink of the fucking of the alcohol and then sips it with a straw while while standing upside down one of the coolest things i've ever seen down there anyways uh, the day before that, there was a shooting on July 4th, and then the three days before that, there was another shooting down here. So, every time I go to Fremont, I have a gun on me, okay? I, I, I know we're going to disagree on that. I know there's a lot of people that are going to say, oh, that's not the answer. Well, listen, if people are down there randomly getting shot, I feel like like I'm not making an uninformed decision, you know, like, whatever. So, uh, that leads me to this article, uh, Fremont Street Experience, Steps Up Security with Metal Detectors and More. Visitors to the Fremont Street Experience will be required to go through metal detectors, bag checks, and subject to age requirements to enter the Las Vegas Pedestrian Mall in a new step to curb increased violence. Now, first off, this is this is a big area. The experience, it's called the experience because it's like, I don't know, a half mile long, quarter mile long, and uh, it has casinos on both sides. You can get to it from like the top floor or the bottom floor. There's literally, not joking, a hundred entrances. And I know they're not going to have a, a metro officer and a metal detector at every single entrance. Also, I can still get around those entrances. If I walk in the valet, like like the valet garage backwards, and then pop out of like, you know, some little crack in the wall, like I'm there, boom. So I get it. They, they have to pretend they're trying. But also, the gun... <laughs> Last I read, guns weren't illegal there. Like, it wasn't a, quote, gun-free zone. So, I mean, maybe, they're, maybe they're making it that? I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 
it's a shifty place to be, man. And it's always the gangs, dude. It's never, it's never dr like some drunk idiot stumbles out of a bar. He lost all of his money and he just swings on somebody. It's the gangs. Gangs go there and hang out and they get fucked up and they fight each other. And then they shoot each other. Metal detectors, bag checks, curfew for unaccompanied minors. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Everyone like, you go out there, everything's alcohol. Right? You can't gamble if you're not 21. You can't buy alcohol if you're not 21. So I'm looking around to my left and to my right, and I'm saying, why the fuck is there 6,000 17-year-olds here? Why are, why are they here? <laughs> like, what are they doing? How, that kid has a tall can. That guy's fuck got a blunt in his mouth, and they're, and they're, all, they're, they're all not even old enough to drive. Like, what, what are we doing here? I get it. It's a fun place to be, but I think that'd be a better priority because also one of the last shootings was a 16-year-old kid shooting another guy and killing him. So it's like, I get it, you know, take the guns away, maybe that wouldn't happen, but guess what? The 16-year-olds are still going to happen, and, they, and they're still going to, they still hate each other. Whatever those two gangs were, they still fucking hate each other. I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it. It, it, it is a big topic, and, 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 but my, my opinion has, has not changed uh, much lately. Anyways, uh, they're going to give a curfew for unaccompanied minors. They'll never enforce that. 18 to 20-year-olds... Uh, increased law enforcement presence will be used on weekends until further notice. There's already, on Fridays they have gang unit. We have a whole unit that's just gang unit. They wear a different color and everything. And they, they're pretty fucking smart, actually. <clears throat> so that's cool. They're, basically they're just saying, basically they just wrote an article saying, we're going to do everything that we've been doing and nothing's going to probably change. <laughs> According to Fremont Street Experience officials, blah, blah, blah. The security measures come in response to increased aggravated assaults and a recent homicide at the downtown tourist spot. It's funny because their they're, they're recent homicide, they're talking about a guy that like, killed his wife. But, they, but the actual one, they're, they're, they're going to mislead you with this article. The actual one was a gang shooting right outside of Binion's Casino. How many witnesses do you think there were? 500. 500 people are shooting right in front of all of them. So these guys are not afraid to, to, to be out, you know, you know, in, out in the wilderness. Quote, the safety and security of our guests, employees, and tenants has been and always will be our priority. Uh, Andrew Simone, another Simone here. Here we go. Andrew Simone, Fremont Street Experience president and CEO says, everything else is secondary. The incidents from the past week cannot and will not be tolerated. Our tourism, jobs, and safety will not be threatened by these actions okay whatever uh police no sorry public safety officials have noticed the increase in violent crime on and around the five block district where visitors often gamble to visit casinos see concerts drink and gawk gawk at the canopied video screen okay cool i think this is a. Uh... I would say like a step in the right direction, but it's also this step has been happening for a long time. So this with this article that was written July 8th, 2022, what day is it today? This article that was written today was written by someone who's never been downtown. <laughs> Whatever. Um, last topic of the day, we're going to talk about dreams, okay? Uh, last night, I took a melatonin. I went to sleep. I didn't have no fucking dreams. I woke up. I couldn't sleep anymore. I went to the living room. I watched South Park at like, whatever, 7 a.m., you know, after only having a couple hours of sleep. Oh, I can't sleep. Maybe I'll watch TV. Immediately fall asleep. Something about South Park makes me sleepy, I guess. Um, I fall asleep. I have a dream where I smile and my teeth are all just completely fucked up. I know that that has a secret meaning. I don't know what it is. I'm smiling. I'm like, damn, dude, my teeth are fucked up. I'm looking in the mirror like, mm, like, dude, I, how did they get so bad? <laughs> I, like my shit was like an animated like you know what my teeth looked like those uh those ape nfts you know how their teeth are all just like long and skinny my teeth looked crazy so then i wake up from that i'm like oh god thank god that was fucking that wasn't there my next one was uh i was at the airport this is a weird one too i was at the airport and uh i guess like i got to my flight and i realized i had a, a gun in my pocket and i was like fuck i, I can't bring a gun on the plane so then I'm like, I run back down. I try to put the gun in my car, but then I for, forget where my terminal is. And I'm just like, fuck, like I'm missing my flight. I'm just stressed out and stressed out and stressed out and stressed out. I'm missing it. It was just like mounting tension going higher and higher and higher. And eventually I woke up and I was like, dude, fuck. Why am I even trying to go on a plane? Why am I dreaming about planes? Dumbass. My third one was a, was a really like, 
scary one right so and all these dreams happen within one hour of like real life time but for some reason these dreams go on for like days and days and hours and hours so i show up to the uh the gym the lvac i remember exactly where i was i was at the lvac las vegas athletic club uh, i show up there i'm like i'm gonna start my workout i don't i, I ain't worked out in fucking seven years so i don't know why i'm dreaming about working out but for whatever reason i am i go straight up the stairs i, I remember i was feeling nervous i'm like everyone's looking at me which is not not something i usually feel so I'm like, okay i start jogging i get into a friendly conversation with some guy jogging and i'm jogging and then suddenly i can't fucking walk and i'm like fuck dude like i can't walk now like i'm trying to jog but my feet are like bricks so I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'll just, I'll go over to this little workout area and I'll do like some curls or something. I go over to the workout area. I do some curls. I see somebody like lift up this, this pillar. And then like, they're trying to get like a exercise ball out of it. I can't explain it, but whatever. They were lifting up like a, a cylindrical pillar to get like an exercise ball out of it. And they slammed it. So imagine just something heavy getting slammed. Boom. They slam it and the ground cracks. And I'm like, fuck dude, we're on the second level. So I'm, I'm on the second floor, you know, I'm, I'm 50 feet up from the next, the rest of the gym. So I'm like, fuck, dude, like that, the ground just cracked. And I see, I'm looking around, everyone's taking pictures on their phone, like the ground's cracking, dude, what the fuck? This gym sucks, dude, they gotta fix the floor. And then that motherfucker cracks more, and the whole floor gets fucking, falls down. I'm like, damn, dude, like, definitely there's casualties down there, like, I just, at least 10 people just died. And then the floor flips over. And I'm at the top of it, falling down. I look down, and there's a there's like a swimming pool, like for a workout swimming pool. I'm like, okay, a million ton, like a million tons of concrete is about to fucking crush on me. I'm gonna land in the swimming pool, but if I catch a boulder to the head, I'm gonna die. And I'm, I'm like, because it's slowly turning. Think like the Titanic or something. It's like, uh, and I'm like, dude, there's no way I can climb this. There's no way I can get out the way. I'm like, I'm doing all these like mathematical equations in my head. I'm like, I'm going to jump into the deepest part of the pool and just ball up. And hopefully, you know, like, hopefully the concrete will land on the edge of the pool and I'll just be trapped underwater. And then I thought to myself, I'd rather be trapped underwater and you just find my body and I just died rather than me be crushed into a pancake. And then like somebody has to find my body and it just looks like literally would look like a pizza. I would just look like a pizza. Like, oh, I used to be a big ball of dough. Now I'm flat and red. I'm just a margarita pizza. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking, dude. And I'm like, fuck. And I get down there and I'm looking up and I'm like, fuck, dude, this is it, man. Either I'm going to live or I'm, I'm dead. And then I wake up and the dog's barking at the fucking mailman. So my question for you guys is, what does it all mean? <laughs> what does it all mean? I don't know. Impending doom, I suppose. You know what did this to me? Stranger Things, probably. <laughs> Strange, stranger things and I don't, fuck, I don't make viral workout videos where where the person in the gym like falls off the monkey bars. I don't fucking know, man. What is it? What does it mean? <laughs> I gotta go to Miss Cleo, man. I'll tell you what it means. It means you're afraid of success. Don't be afraid of success, white boy. You can achieve anything you try. Put your mind to. Take the what and lift the what. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the podcast, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and give me a hell yeah if uh, you're still here. By the way, if you tuned in late, you can watch the repeat of this podcast on iTunes, on Podbean, and on uh, iTunes and YouTube. And that comes out on Sunday just in time for your, your Monday drive to work, right? Where you're going to fucking you hate your boss, goddammit. Uh, shout out to, extra big shout out to Minute Maid for the donation at the beginning of the stream. Very much appreciated. I love when you guys send me money. I will always accept your money. I'll take it. Send it. You you send it, I'll spend it. Okay? But if you don't have money, here's what you can do. You can tell a friend about the podcast. Tell a friend, co-worker, family member. Say there's this funny podcast. So what I do, I take a bubble bath and I put a podcast on. I'll tell you guys, my podcast... It's all action. There's no there's no boring part. There's no soft spots. I try and do that on purpose. So, so I put some I put some work into this. So I want you guys to share it with your friends. Spread the love. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to iBookboy, Infamy, Spudboy, Minute Maid, 
Hi, book boy. Was just just no one. We didn't have a big crowd today. Not a not a big crowd today. But you know what? It's quality, not quantity. Unless we're talking about money, then it's quantity. Send send more. Everyone send all your money that you have. Saudi Arabian prince. I I got women's clothing and I'll wear it. Okay, don't tempt me. <laughs> don't do it. Oh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, wait, am I missing something? Uh, you guys can check the podcast later. Uh, tell a friend. Podbean. Oh, yeah, if you want to, you can go on iTunes and even leave a review. Say, this podcast is great. I think I only have two reviews. We've been doing this podcast like five years. <laughs> but then again, who who reviews podcasts? I, I don't fucking know. Um, oh, yeah, the barracks gave me a copyright strike. Maybe we'll talk about whatever whatever becomes of that. We'll talk about it next week. But that was pretty whack. Steve, that was pretty whack of you. Um, yeah, you guys have a great night. Have a safe weekend. And as I always say, don't drink too much, but also don't drink too little. dream means you have to clean your room and go to the gym